Recoil got you bothered? Stay tuned. Top 10 tips for taming recoil. While most modern shooters can tell you a great way to moderate recoil is put a can on it. But they're probably thinking of a different can than this one. A can refers to a suppressor, which looks like a can on the end of your barrel. This is nothing new. Hiram Maxim invented this device way back in around 1915. The same guy who invented the muffler for an automobile. So what a suppressor does, some people call them silencers, but they're not silent. They knock about 20 to 30 decibels of sound off the top end, which is significant and can really protect your hearing. So how much recoil does it reduce? Boy, some people say it's as much as a muzzle brake, but then what muzzle brake are they measuring? And which can are they measuring? So the can can be six inches long, seven inches long, nine inches long. The bigger and longer the can, the more the recoil reduction and the sound reduction. And it works on the same principle as the muzzle brake. There are baffles inside of the suppressor can into which the air from that muzzle blast travels and it has a long route through the can and it helps disperse that energy and the blast of the sound. So you will tame your recoil and you'll help your ears at the same time by putting a suppressor on the end of your rifle. Unfortunately, it looks kind of silly. An easy way to reduce recoil in any rifle is to use a lighter weight bullet in your cartridges. In a 308 Winchester that's eight pounds, you shoot a 180 grain bullet and you're going to get 20 foot pounds of recoil energy at 13 feet per second. Step down to the 150 grain bullet and you step down to 17 foot pounds of energy at 12 feet per second. Go down to the little 125 grain and you only have 15 foot pounds of energy at 11 feet per second. That is a reduction in recoil. Muzzle brakes, the modern way to reduce recoil. But there's a problem. Ouch, extremely loud. Muzzle brakes can reduce recoil by as much as 48%. Uh, but they can also increase the muzzle blast or the sound by as, well, as much as 50%. <laughs> so you really need to be careful. Muzzle brakes will divert the gases away from the straight line that pushes back against you. By pushing those gases to the side or even slightly backward, that's how they reduce the recoil. And the more they are angled back, the more they reduce the recoil, but the louder they are. And I tell you, the, the loudness problem is a serious one. Uh, you get permanent nerve damage to your hearing, the 140 decibels, and that's just one single blast at 140 decibels, and most rifles will 150 to 160 decibels. And each decibel is not a slight increase, it's a significant one. 10 decibels is the equivalent of doubling the sound. So you go from 150 to 160, you've doubled the potential damage to your hearing. And a muzzle brake that angles the blast back really increases the uh, volume. So be careful with your muzzle brakes. Yeah, always wear hearing when you shoot them, but uh, probably don't want that pushes it back more than 30% at the most. 15% is a lot safer. And the ones that just come out horizontally are the best of all. Um, great way to reduce recoil, however. You can get a 308 to shoot like a 22250 and a 300 Magnum about like 25 out 6 or maybe even a 243. Pretty sweet. Muzzle brakes. Reduce your recoil. Then there are recoil pads. Recoil pads don't reduce recoil, but they reduce the feel of recoil. And of course, you can go with everything from a super hard steel butt plate to a super thick, soft, spongy recoil pad on the butt of your gun. Shotguns, rifles, doesn't matter. The more they sponge, the more energy they absorb instead of you. Now you can get various strengths and pressures and densities of rubber on the back. This is fairly thin and hard. Not as hard as a steel plate though. This one has some ribs and it looks fairly spongy. And of course, that big shotgun one, 
has a lot of give. Shop around, most of them claim they're the world's best at reducing recoil. You'll have to shoot a few and figure it out for yourself because I can't predict which one's gonna work the best for you. But a soft recoil pad can really help. If you don't like your recoil pad, you can replace it. Just takes a couple of screws through those little holes you see in the rubber pad. They come out the back side and you just have to take the one that's on your rifle off and replace it with one you think is make softer recoil. Just make sure you get it in the right size, width, and length to cover your butt or your rifle's butt. Another way to tame recoil is with proper stock fit and geometry. What does that mean? Well, first of all, there's length of pull, the distance from the trigger to the butt so that your head is back far enough that you don't get your nose busted by your thumb. Short length of pull, busted nose. Longer length of pull, you've got to find a nice medium where it fits you well. But the next thing, and probably more important, is the shape of the buttstock. Notice how this one has the barrel line coming this way, and look at how low the comb is on that rifle. What does that mean? It's going to kick up and hit you in the cheek. Recoil. Ouch. How do you fix that? with a straight line. Now this is a modern muzzle loader and it has more of a straight line comb that's more in line, but it's still fairly low. You've got to have it a little lower so you can see the sights. But the ultimate is a modern rifle stock that climbs. And this one is climbing. Let me get this cover off here so it makes a little more sense to you. Line of the barrel, line of the comb really close to the bore that means all the energy comes straight back and it doesn't kick up into your face some rifles will even have a little bit of negative comb the comb slants forward and what that does is it slides away from your face it outs out and under rather than up and in the next thing on that same basic idea is the form or shape the larger the area of the butt pad the more it spreads recoil out on your shoulder and the wider the comb, the less bite in your cheek. Notice the difference in the uh, comb width of these two. The narrower that comb, the more it's gonna bite you up in the cheekbone. And a cheek pad can help by patting it against your cheek. And you might be able to see that right here. That spreads the recoil across your cheek rather than all underneath your, cheek, your bone. So that's the way stock fit can help you tame recoil. Well, one of the easiest ways to tame recoil is with weight. A heavier rifle recoils less than a light one. This is a six pound rifle. It could have a lot of bite depending on the cartridge you're shooting. This is a 10 pound rifle. If they were both chambered for the 308 Winchester, and neither one of them is, and they both shot a 150 grain bullet at 2,800 feet per second, the six pound rifle would recoil 23 foot pounds of energy at 16 feet per second recoil velocity. The eight pound rifle with the same load would only recoil with 17 foot pounds of ouch and 12 feet per second of recoil velocity. So increase your rifle weight, decrease your recoil. Now a simple and inexpensive way to tame recoil, especially if you like a lightweight rifle because it's easier to carry, is to put on a recoil pad. They just strap across your chest and they provide good dampening of recoil from even lightweight rifles. Quick, simple, and inexpensive. Hey folks, say if you enjoy these videos and the blogs on ronspomeroutdoors.com, I invite you to join me as a supporting member through Patreon. Our Patreon community helps with the funding of these programming and it really makes a difference. You get some early access to our videos. I answer your questions. We produce a newsletter for you. There's just a lot of inside information, behind the scenes sort of thing. You become a supporting member and we really appreciate it. So check out the link below and join us on Patreon. Hey, a relatively expensive way to reduce recoil, perhaps by as much as 20%, is with a mercury or tungsten recoil reduction tube. This one is tungsten. There are little tungsten beads inside of here. You can hear them shifting. It works on the inertia process, but also the weight. This is 12 ounces. You slide this into the buttstock of your rifle, and obviously it's heavier, so it's going to recoil less. But there should be a little recoil reduction with the shifting of the weight inside of that tube in a delayed response. Mercury works similarly, but is toxic. I don't know how 
much of a problem that is. This one is designed to be screwed into this Blazer R8. It's an option, but you can get aftermarket ones that will work with any rifle. Just make sure you've got a hole to put it in. <laughs> the least expensive way to reduce recoil is mental. I call it mind over batter. <laughs> and this is probably something similar to what boxers do. You just have to mentally prepare yourself for some recoil. Obviously, it's not going to kill you. People have been shooting big bores for hundreds of years, uh, taking a lot of recoil. It's just a matter of mind over batter. So I'm going to shoot, for demonstration, a 375 H&H with a 300 grain bullet. This is hardly the hardest kicking rifle on the planet, but it's more than most of us think we want to shoot. Now, African PHs will shoot 500 Nitro Express, 458 lot, um, even 600 Nitro Express, 400 grain bullets, 500 grain bullets. They're taking as much as 80 foot pounds of recoil energy huge but they can do it and over and over again they can do it so obviously there's something to do with mind over matter so put yourself in the frame of mind as you're going to take some recoil it is not going to hurt it's not going to break you the important part is though to cover your ears because hearing that muzzle blast i think is as bad as the recoil i think more people are afraid of the muzzle blast than they are of the recoil so we're now going to see how I can absorb the recoil from this 375. <laughs> I'm not exactly the jolly green giant standing here, folks, but that did not hurt. So, now it doesn't hurt that my rifle weighs about nine pounds, and if it were 11, it would be even easier, but we've touched on all those other tricks. So. Just start thinking about that rifle is going to recoil, it's going to push me back, it is not gonna bite me and it's not going to hurt me if I have the right size stock, the right shape, good rounded comb, all the other things we've talked about in this episode, you can learn to handle it mind over batter. Okay folks, now the last trick I'm gonna throw at you for reducing felt recoil is training. Obviously you can train yourself to absorb recoil and not flinch. And the trick is to get the right body position and uh, use that mental trick we mentioned earlier, but don't do a 22 target shooter stance, something like this, because with your body being almost parallel with the rifle, that is gonna tear your shoulder back this way. You would have a bit of a more squared up posture facing the target Keep that buttstock in your chest, not out on your bicep. You gotta really tuck it in there. The further you put it out on your arm, the more likely it is to rip something or hurt. <laughs> this takes a pretty brutal recoil to actually rip something, but it has been known to happen. So, you don't wanna be completely squared up like I thought one time when a shot knocked me over from a 416 Rigby. That doesn't give you any kind of a stance to hold your feet against the recoil. But be prepared to rock back with a bit more of a pressure and lean forward like this. Don't stand up tall like this and then even lean back a little bit like some people do, especially when they're afraid of recoil. They'll slide back on that stock and do that kind of a hold. Lean into that baby and then you can rock back with the shot. So again, I'm gonna use a 300 grain bullet in a 375 H&H. And see if I can do this right. Once again, not bad recoil at all. Didn't knock me over. I knew it was coming. It was a push, it wasn't a bite. Well fitting stock really makes a difference. But a great way to do this training is with double ear protection foam plugs as well as covers, eye protection, and then shoot thinking about the target, your sight. You know how when you hunt deer and you shoot, you don't even remember you shot, you never feel any recoil? You go to the target range and oh my gosh, this is going to hurt, and then you feel the recoil. So once again, mind over matter as well as uh, training. Think this is my job. I am shooting this. I can do it. I can handle it. I know I'm not going to feel that recoil unless I worry about it and think about it. Do those sorts of things. Be out training. 
Start with a lighter recoiling rifle and work your way up. There's nothing wrong with starting with a 22 to learn good trigger control. Move up to a 223 or a 243 and then step up to a 270 or 30 out six. Go up a little bit with your bullet weights. Keep that training going. Don't flinch. The old trick about reducing flinching is to shoot an empty rifle. Have a friend load the rifle behind your back. Not put around in the chamber, ready to go. And if you flinch, you will know it because there won't be a recoil at all because there's nothing in the chamber. Do that about six times and then he puts a live round in and you get the recoil. By then you've settled down and you're concentrating on your target and you hit the target and you don't feel the recoil. Promise. Done it. So those are the tips for controlling recoil. I hope you put some of them to use and they work for you. If they don't, or if you find something better, let us know and we will put it on another episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Thanks for watching and enjoy that recoil. Mm -hmm.